Um, couldn't really get the Zoom to work. Didn't really know how to do it. Hopefully this is okay. They're recording on my phone. Um, and even just in my car. Um, but, um, yeah, there's a few things that stood out to me in the in the presentation by Steven Shattuck and also of uh, Rain Oak. Um, one thing that Steven Shattuck um, talked about, he talked about that there needed to be, um, if I'm not mistaken, talked about that there needed to be one channel um, of communication with your donors. Um, he talked a lot about being online and offline. Um, and he talked about also um, learning how to interact with your donors. Um, which made me think about the other gentleman that uh, zoomed in for a class session from Atlanta. Um, he talked a lot about um, he talked a lot about Habitat for Humanity and he gave us examples of what he does. Um, and something that he said was that there's a database for him to search and do his homework on donors so he can know how much to ask. Um, and he has a reference point for that. You know, he can look at something that shows him, hey, donor A, B, and C all have the capacity to give you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, right? Um, and, and he can use that to navigate, you know, to navigate the, the ask of how much. Um, but when it comes to the channel, when it comes to interacting with the donor and understanding and trying to understand, you know, do they prefer a phone call? Do they prefer an email? Do they prefer... Um, being something sent to them in the mail. And I'm thinking more so from smaller nonprofits. I'm thinking more so from those who are just starting out. Um, if there's any sort of, and there may not be, but if there's any sort of database uh, that lets us know um, that we can also go into as opposed to just figuring out how much to ask, figuring out, okay, these donors have been asked by these nonprofits um, online mostly you know you get mostly um, an age range that is you know online donors or donations um, or something like that some kind of data that may exist I don't know if there is or isn't but that would definitely be a question of mine to find out if there's anything like that you know especially for nonprofits that are smaller, that are just starting out, you know, who knows for those of us who are in class, um, may one day want to start a nonprofit and, and not have a donor base. Um, and I do know that, that, that Oak and, and Ryan, I believe in their presentation said, um, that what works, what works, what's work works best for donors is a roll of the dice. Um, and I know they mentioned that, right? Uh, but something that Steven said um, prior to their presentation was um, to look at the prior interactions. So I guess creating your own form of data, right? If, you, if you're more established um, or you are starting to establish yourself, it's looking to the past interactions you've had with donors A, B, and C, you know. Um, and so I'm just kind of seeing comparing the two things where, one, well, you have no idea. It's a roll of the dice. This may have worked today. You know, you sent the email with the video attachment that caught their eye. Um, and they clicked on it. They watched it. They felt that they wanted to donate. And, and they did. Um, right? And you can use that as a past interaction. Um, whereas again, right, uh, Oak um, and Ray said that, you know, it's just a roll of the dice. You really don't always know what's going to work for them. Um, so, yeah, I guess just, yeah, if there's any other form that that helps nonprofits that are just starting out, that are small, that don't have a lot of past interactions to to build on. Um, another thing that um, made another thing that stood out to me. Um, especially when it came to like e-philanthropy, like giving online and stuff, um, 
And something that, that Stephen said also, these two points, was Stephen said, I believe, that um, the phone calls. Phone calls are still very, very impactful. Um, and I think maybe even in some of our class sessions, um, that offline is still very impactful, more than online. And, and that was kind of a surprise to me being, honestly, a millennial who's always on my phone, communicates with people on my phone, um, you know, we have group text messaging, uh, Instagram, group chats, um, just all kinds of different ways of communicating now with my generation, right? Um, but to learn that still just a regular over the phone phone call is very impactful. Um, and even even the voicemail, even the voicemail is very impactful, right? Um, which really makes me think about something that 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 Ray and Oak brought up that said that you know 77% of people in the US on a phone um and that there is a, a higher click rate right on either it could be a text I'm assuming cuz I've received those things over text there's a description like a paragraph and then it tells you to click on something to donate it tells you to click on something to watch a video um and I'm just wondering um, about like, I don't know, the comparison of that, um, over the phone, phone calls. Like I, I get a lot of text messages with attachments from Amnesty International. Um, I'm wondering if with their, with, with, with us living in a day and age where it's so quick for me to get a message and I can look at it, I'll see a picture, um, and, I choose whether or not to click on it or to donate. Um, I'm wondering if there if there's also data for that to show that personally, like myself, would I respond more to phone calls from them? Um, with other donors respond to phone calls um, from other kinds of nonprofits. And so, yeah, so I'm, I'm just wondering um, with the fact that phone calls are still very impactful, but yet... Um, a, a, a organization like Amnesty International, at least I haven't received any phone calls from them. I'm still receiving text messages with attachments. I'm, I'm receiving text messages with a description and a video link, um, which honestly I don't really click on. Um, and so I'm wondering what that looks like for other people. Is there data that relates to um, to these to these things, right? To the to how people are re are how people are contacted. Um, and I don't know, maybe that was confusing. Um, but, um, another, one of the last things that I'm still trying to learn about, um, and I kind of call it, I think of it as leadership specifically in the realm of nonprofit work is this whole idea of stewardship. Um, I understand that stewardship is important. Um, I believe Stephen uh, said he gave us numbers where he said that eight out of 10 donors will not make a second donation, uh, simply because no one steward stewarded the relationship. Um, and so for me, I'm still, I'm still kind of stuck on what that means and what that looks like. I believe he, he I believe Stephen talked about um, when you're going to ask or when you're going to ask the second time and stuff like that, he talked about, uh, contextualizing and customizing, uh, the ask to the donor, right? Contextualize it, customize it to him. And as far as he was explaining it from what I remember, he was talking about offline and online. So customize it, contextualize it, you know, of, if, if the if the donor has been, uh, I believe he mentioned like retweeting you, the organization, or he posted something about your organization, right? And he's been doing mostly online um, things about your organization. Then potentially, you know, the best way is to do an online um, reaching out to that person online. Um, and I guess that's a form of stewardship, right? But I just, I, I don't, it's still sort of not concrete for me on how to steward the relationship. Um, is it simply, you know, if you realize, okay, all they do is online, they're just, they just want to do online. 
um, interactions with our nonprofit is stewarding stewarding the relationship than simply emailing them or telling them thank you for the retweet or thank you for the post since they're not really you know doing things over the phone offline whatever offline e um, mailing things is is I guess online stewardship simply that you know again a like on their post a following follow them back on their Instagram page uh, uh thanking them for the retreat thank thanking them for the post um you know I just I feel like I I don't I'm not clear yet on what stewardship looks like and I know it 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 can be different for everyone it can change um but I'm just still not fully clear you know, even if there was just a, a, a base of understanding on how to steward an online relationship, how do you steward an offline relationship? Um, how do you steward like, you know, over the phone? How do you steward if people mostly respond to your mail um, or, or whatever the different forms of stewardship, uh, those different channels, I guess, um, of communication and stewardship? I think I'm still like I'm, I'm understanding that it's important to take care of the relationship. I'm just trying to figure out when it comes to a donor, when it comes to the second ask, when it comes to the first ask, when it comes to finding new donors for nonprofits that are new, nonprofits that are not big, that don't have a, a, a strong or big donor base yet. Um, how what are the best practices? You know, because in my mind, I would default to those if I didn't know, if I would default to those best practices in the field, you know, if, if in a few years I want to start a nonprofit, I just, I'm, I'm feeling like I don't fully grasp that yet. Um, and maybe it's just like a lack of understanding on my part, but that is definitely one of the bigger questions I have, um, is uh, an explanation of proper stewardship, best practices.